Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church and throughout the world that may be watching us here this morning. Welcome to the fifth Sunday in Easter. It's a beautiful morning and we hope that you'll enjoy our time of worship together. Please enjoy our opening hymn. And I pray you of your boundless mercy 
and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor and sinful being. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and given us His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Join me together now in the reciting of the Psalm of the Day. Psalm 146, we recite responsibly. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God where I have been. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is in the, in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who execute justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord.
you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will, grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 6, and then following in chapter 7 as well. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenistic arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should give up preaching of the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, who we all appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to, continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those of Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now, when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed toward him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not let this sin, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading, the epistle reading, comes from 1 Peter chapter 2. Verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. And you, and as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And 
a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of the darkness and into the marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, happy Mother's Day to all present here watching uh, from afar, in the four corners of Long Island, and anywhere in the distant cyberspace. Today we heard from Jesus uh, again preparing his disciples, getting closer to that point of separating from him, and wanting for them to be confident in where he is going, what he has taught them, and what he expects that they will be able to do in his absence. Jesus says to them, I'm going, and you know the way. Interestingly, both Thomas and, and Philip speak up and they, and they act almost as if they've not learned anything in the last three years that they've been with Jesus. Thomas says, Lord, I, we don't know where you're going. Like, how can we possibly know the way? Philip says, just show us the Father. So often in life, we hear things, we're taught things, um, we experience things. And yet, so much of that which we see, we learn, or we experience doesn't necessarily always come to the forefront of our mind when we need that information. I know I can certainly think of times uh, when I've been doing just mundane, everyday things, and uh, just an example today, packing something up and saying to my daughter, I'm holding a box, and I said, Abby, hand me that, 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 that. It was a sleeping bag, you know, <laughs> I just, the, I just couldn't, couldn't, spit out the words. We experience a lot in the course of our lives. For the disciples, they've experienced a lot in the course of these three years walking with Jesus. And now Jesus knows that his time with them is limited. He knows that there are, are very select moments left. And he probably has some very critical things he wants to be able to share with them. But they're not necessarily getting it. Today being Mother's Day, it's only appropriate that I, I speak a little bit about mothers. And I can tell you that parents in general, and Jesus speaking to his disciples is, is very much like a parent in this scenario. And parents in general, I think, want the best for their children. And they want the best for um, they want the best to, to occur in any experience in life. I know for, in my own personal experience, my mom would uh, encourage me to do things on my own. Uh, and was very supportive of my efforts. And often, I would get completely flustered. Uh, I can think in time, a particular moment, you know, where I had a homework assignment and I was working on and I and I thought I had really destroyed what it was I was trying to do. And my mom came along and said, no, 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 hold on, hold on. It's not, it's not as bad as you think. And, and she just kind of went through and, and helped me change the diagram a little bit. And with a little bit of creativity, we saved this piece of poster board that was probably the last one available, you know, on the planet, and I was freaking out. She used that opportunity to guide me and help me to understand that in a moment of difficulty, the best thing we can do sometimes is just step back, look, and think about everything that we've learned and experienced so far in our lives and apply as much of that information to what we're working on in the moment. Now not everybody's had a great experience with their parents. Some memories may be better than others. But I think in the grand scheme of things we as human beings and as optimistic individuals in general tend to want to remember the good 
And so I have very fond memories of, of my mom and all the various things that she taught me. And those are warm memories. On a day like today, on Mother's Day, I think fondly of the ways in which she guided me and led me and loved me and, uh, and protected me in many scenarios far beyond my ability to understand or rationalize at the time. That's what Jesus is trying to do for his disciples. He's trying to protect them and guide them and say, look, you know, I'm going, you're going to get there, but you've got to be prepared for what's coming ahead. So believe in me, is what he said to Thomas and Philip, and, and obviously to all of the other disciples who were listening at that time. And he said, if you, if you don't believe in me, he said, believe, at least believe in what you've seen. Believe in what you've experienced. Believe in what you've learned. Trust in those things, because those things, while they are great, are nothing compared to the things that you will do in his power. When we're raised by our parents, I've said this before, maybe not here in this format, but you learn something from everything you experience in life from your parents. You either learn what to do or what not to do. And so while anybody can look at their life experience and say, oh, that was really pretty crummy, or oh, wow, that was great, there's always an opportunity to draw something out of everything that you experience. But we have to have it at the top of our mind. We have to be willing and able to recall that information when we need it and be able to put it into play. And that's where this worship experience and this life that we have in Christ is so important. One of the things that we, we hear Jesus saying in this Gospel of John in chapter 14 is, I am the way, the truth, and the light. He's basically saying, this is the path. This is the way. I'm going to give you one map. It's straight in this direction, and you just follow this way, and you will get to where it is you're going. The problem that we have is that I know personally, me, I often want to do things my own way. I'm a guy, and we have the reputation of not reading instructions. But I can tell you, just very recently, I put together a piece of furniture, and I actually followed the instructions very, very carefully. And I was amazed at how well it came out. It was incredible. I had everything organized. I did everything in the right steps. They said it should take two hours for two people. I did it in an hour, and it came out perfect because I followed the instructions. There's just one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. And that's what he's sharing with his disciples. That's what he's sharing with us on a weekly basis as we hear his word, as we pray to and through him, as we invite the Holy Spirit to guide and to lead us. We're saying, Lord, I want to follow your way. I know your truth. I want that life. When we embrace Jesus for who he is, just like he told the disciples, then we have the power of the Father with us. He who created all things, the stars, the sun, the moon, and the heavens, that power and that wisdom of God lives in and through us to be able to do, as Jesus says, greater works than he did in the sight of his disciples. I don't think there's anything greater, quite frankly, than the birth of a new child. And for you mothers or grandmothers or for those who have given birth, you know that the pain of that birth is probably, in my opinion, it's got to be dramatic. Um, but the joy of that child moments later, I'm told, erases all of that pain. There is no greater joy for God than to look at us, his children, and know that we are doing exactly what he wants us to do, that we are following his way and getting closer to him every day in the things that we do and in the life that we live. If there's a mother, a grandmother, an aunt, 
a woman of stature in your life today that has empowered you, impressed upon you good values, lifted you up in some way, please call them, Facebook them, message them, text them. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much you respect what they've done for you. Because that's what God wants for you and for me. To share with those around us the love we have for them, which is ideally an example of the love that God has for us. May God continue to lead you and guide you along His way through his truth, to live his life. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. We continue now with the singing of our offertory song. Where your word is spoken, 
Forgiveness reigns and love is displayed. Give us good examples to inspire youth to do all that is good and pure and to seek these things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us the wisdom of faith that through the Holy Spirit we might know your Son to be the way, the truth, and the life. Bless all those who teach and all who learn that the goal of our knowledge would be to know Christ and to make him known. Do not let your word be bound, but let it have free course among us. Preserve those in isolation from idleness, and instead let our minds be renewed in scripture and prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, O God, for your goodness in hearing the prayers of your people and granting us confidence to approach your, th your throne with mercy. Hear us now, in the name of and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. O Lord, we commend to you now all those for whom we pray, trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. upon you and give you peace.